be safe. This is a, a new a new podcast. Uh, uh, you know, Are we sure it's nobody safe. I don't, I don't think anybody's safe, bro. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody, you're not safe. safe. I'm not safe. That's right. I'll tell you who else isn't going to be safe today, and it's going to be Nick Saban. It's going to be Jimbo Fisher, and it's going to be guys like Dabo Swinney. You guys are dead meat today. So, right. um, Let's go. college yeah, football. College football. This is my my co-host uh, Bryce Pinson, man. We we talk a lot of trash to each other. We're going to talk a lot of trash to everybody else. Nobody definitely is safe. So let's go ahead and get started on this first one. Uh, uh, been a lot of stuff here in the last week about uh, Nick Saban, the NIL, uh, him and Jimbo Fisher. I, it seems to me like when you're when you're the rich and you keep on getting richer, and you should shut up when you're talking about this NIL and every time I turn on anything that has to do with college football, it is uh, him saying how they aren't paying people. Nick Saban saying this, how they're not paying kids and that they never were. And, you know, back on, even back as far as, uh, as national signing day, him and, uh, and Jimbo were slamming their fists on tables and talking about how everybody else is paying up. Um, uh, Jimbo and his sliced bread, it sounded like Alan Iverson's practice rant to me. But uh, so, so hold up, hold up. You're saying, and and sorry, maybe I haven't heard this, but I'm excited to hear this. <laughs> You're telling me that Nick Saban said he's not paying anyone, and he never was. Correct, correct. He he said he back did. at National Signing Day, back at National Signing Day, he, his thing was that they'd never pay. Um, he's just said that the other day. I know we didn't pay no, anyone. We didn't. He, he he went from we didn't pay anyone just the other day to then he was talking about how. Um, a and M had paid thirty million, and then he even threw Deion Sanders under the bus and was talking about how they paid a kid a million dollars. You know, and we'll talk Deion's response more. But uh, I, well, let's go right into it because I love Deion's response right off the bat. He ain't talking to me. He ain't talking to Jimbo Fisher. He's talking to his boosters. <laughs> <laughs> the response wasn't for me. It's for his boosters. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that, that made a lot of sense to me is like, hey, maybe this is all about, hey, guys, give me some money. Because if he's really not paying them, which yeah. I think is probably BS. Come on. Um, maybe he's not, though. But either Come way, on. like. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't do not you give him. We, this is, the name of this show is Nobody's Safe. Not not everybody's safe. I know. You're kind of not safe. Right. Come on. No, nah, I got plenty to kill him on. I got plenty to kill him on whether he pays him or not. Here's the thing about Nick Saban. Nick Saban. Um, is mad because the rules change. Like in a video game, you, you know that guy, uh, what's the guy's name? The guy for the Dallas Maverick, um, the owner, Mark Cuban. Yes. He said he doesn't do video game stuff because the meta always changes. That's why he doesn't own a, a – the meta changed. That, that's what happened here. The meta changed in this football game, and Nick Saban don't like it. No, he doesn't. Like literally I hear him talking, Jason, and he's like, oh, um, we were the number two team in recruits this year. Oh, poor thing. And AM was number one. <laughs> right. Shut up, bro. You're number two. Bro, you know how many teams there are in college football? It's like my daughter playing Battle Royales. You got second place. Quit getting mad. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous. It, it, listen, man. If anybody that thinks that these kids were not getting paid, well, a long time ago, by the way. I, oh, I mean, yeah. This has been going on for a long time. And let's. Everybody can stop acting like that's not the case. What what bothers me the most, I think, in this whole thing, yeah. Number one, I don't want to hear you bitching when you win. Okay, you've been winning yeah. national titles since you got, you know, <laughs> since LSU. I mean, yep. Alabama was junk whenever he got there from the Dolphins, and he yep. immediately flips it, and they they win a, a national title in what the third season. You yeah. know, get out of here. Don't I don't want to hear how how it's so bad. And don't tell me that you haven't been doing something because every, the, the truth of it is going all the way back to Eric Dickerson and guys like that at SMU, when they got the death penalty, yep. they've been paying players in college football. Yeah. Okay? And so, and, and rightfully so, by the way, because these places like places like Alabama are making millions and millions of dollars per year, per game, even. And these kids have been supposed, if they're just on scholarship, and I mean, oh, it's such a great thing for you to go to school and get free school. Uh, that is a great thing. That is a great thing. Yeah. It's not as but great you have as having a million dollars, too. But, but Jason, you have to go. 
They're, they're, it's not like it's not like I mean, even in basketball now, you don't even have a choice. It's like, hey, you can't go to the NFL the first year. And, and I'm sorry, but in basketball, you have these European leagues. You have these other leagues that you can go to. What other league are you going to go to and get drafted to the NFL? What other league do you have? You have no other option. If you hate school, you still got to go to school. That's bull crap, bro. Right. Right. And some people are built for it and some people aren't. But in the and you know, in the end, don't sit here and act like we were all brand new at, about this whole damn deal. Because there's been people get caught all the freaking time, all yep. the time. You know, look at look. Uh, Rick Pitino lost his job. That guy is one of the greatest coaches in the history of college basketball. And because of whatever happened with his uh, the last time of the, you know, where they were paying that recruit. He ends up losing his job and he's coaching at some little crap school. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was there more was than a that. little bit more to it, but it it is certain the rest of them were really good at not getting caught. And that's what I feel like it is with Saban. The guy has been great at at you know putting stuff in between him and the it's always been that. You know, it's something that he's talking about. The new rules is the new rule that the NCAA just put into place is that you cannot use NIL incentives as a recruiting tool. Okay, whoop de shit. That's okay. That that's exactly what he's already been good at. He knows how to <laughs> say send a, send a booster. Hey, come to Alabama. We're gonna get you this money. Don't worry about it. But he knows yeah. how to put him put people in between himself. And because you don't, I mean, he can sit here and say this all the time. And we, I mean, we would probably never get proof, but don't act like we're all stupid just because we don't yeah. have what it is to prove it. That's the only reason why you've never been in trouble. But, but here's the deal. Like my problem is, like we said, the meta change, the game change, the rules sure. change, and you're being a freaking baby, man. Just don't be a baby about it. I, Hey, I get some stuff and I have more to talk about this whole deal, man. And I think. I think there's even more, you know what, might as well go into it. I think there's more of a problem here. Um, and it kind of goes back. Do you remember the steroid era in baseball Yeah, where they put a magnifying glass? Man, baseball was so cool. I loved baseball. But I mean, who doesn't every day I turn up. Yeah. And I'm not saying nothing. I'm not, I'm not for, I, I don't even have an opinion. But every time I turned on TV, I saw a court case. I saw people talking about steroids, bro, and I, I loved baseball, and I was just over it. And here, what I think's happening is we're putting a magnifying glass on college football. Right. And if we don't watch it, like, because now these are thoughts that are filling my head. Well, are we just going to have, like, whoever's the Yankees is going to win the national championship every year? Whoever forks out the most money under no salary cap's going to win it? I mean, I'm cool with that, I guess. That's, that, that's again, what's already been going before, on. It's it was our, Exactly. It was already happening. But now that it's open, we all know it's happening. And right. now it's like, do I even like college football anymore? Okay. I don't know. I'm about to find that and, out. And I think that that's the thing. I think that if you, like, for, for instance, on Twitter, if you, this is where kind of some of this idea to have this show came from is there was a guy on Twitter that was talking about that. I think a lot of people are being fooled into thinking that the game is going to, is, is change, changing so dramatically right now. And, and to some extent it is, but it's less about the NIL and more about the, the transfer portal, in my opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. The transfer portal has been allowed to, well, if you look at Lincoln Riley and me being on Oklahoma. With Riverside FM, it's all about simplicity. Sim simple videos, whether it's from your phone or from your, la from your computer laptop, um, or it could be on your desktop. Anyway, you're going to get full on videos from each person on the podcast, plus audio tracks that are separated out as well. There's not really an easier way to find to do this, plus they're even going to give you a free version of it to try it out before you do it. There, there's really no downside to this. Give it a shot. Check it out. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Way Past Due. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and uh, we kind of have a, well, it's kind of a special treat for me tonight, you know. But... Oh, yeah, yeah, good. That was... This guy worshipped Lincoln Riley about freaking five <laughs> flipping minutes ago. All of a sudden now. It takes well, it was shady guy. the way he went out, okay? It's, it's what I'm going to tell you is this. Do, do I think that there was a reason why he left? Absolutely. OK, do I think that Oklahoma screwed that up on their own? Yes, they did. OK, yeah. now that being said, the way that Lincoln went about it was not cool. 
you know, and then he's one of the ones that at signing day, he was talking about putting some guardrails on the transfer portal. Jerk off. You just got 13 new starters, 13 previous starters to come Don't with you, you to SC. It. You know, whenever it's in my favor, yeah, we're going to back it. Yeah. But when it's not in my yeah. favor, when we're year, done, when somebody else tries to do done. what I just did, you know, then that's not going to be okay. But since we did it this year, it's okay. You know, screw that. Guy. <laughs> but, and that's, and on top of that, there's a lot, I mean, it's hard for me to say that I watched that Oklahoma state game and let's just put it this way. I don't think he coached as well as he could have. Okay. And the reason why is because if they go to a BCS or well, BCS, they don't even around anymore. The playoff, Here if they get into the playoff, Jason. if they get into the playoff anymore, then he can't get the SC job or the LSU job. Because, yeah. and I'm going to tell you now, when it comes to Lincoln Riley, the week that they lost to Baylor. Why can't they? Explain that to me. Why can't he? Well, because he would have would have screwed with his ability to recruit. And National Signing oh, okay. Day was coming up. Okay. You know, so he, okay. he was, in order to do that, he was going to end up losing recruits like that. Now. I didn't know he was a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, keep going. Okay. Well, there's a lot. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> well, and and here's another thing that Oklahoma screwed it up, too was that everybody knew that he wasn't there on that Monday following the game when he normally takes – he has his press conference. He's usually there. All of a sudden, he's not there. Everybody knew he had flown to Baton Rouge, but nobody held his feet to the fire on it. And everybody – and I was I was one of the people on Twitter saying, whoa, this doesn't look good. And it was, oh, he's not going nowhere. He's not going nowhere. He's just like Stoops. See, Stoops – everybody wanted to hire Stoops all the time. And, and they're like – and what is he – when he gets back and they ask him what, about being gone he's, and about possibly being a contender for the LSU job. And all – the one thing that Lincoln said, the one thing that Lincoln said was, I'm the head coach at the University of Oklahoma. My response was, until you're not. And they didn't say shit to it. They didn't have a secondary follow-up question. He just went on his merry way. And guess what? Then right after the Oklahoma State game, uh, it's been out since then that Caleb Williams rode back with him in a vehicle instead of on the bus with his with his teammates. That mm -hmm. uh, so that was already worked out. Now Caleb played in the in the bowl game to kind of you know, but of course they were going to play that. Hey, Lincoln is slick, slick. He was smart. He did it the right way. But what I, the point is is that all these guys act like we're they're, they're the only ones that have a brain, you know, <laughs> and that. You know, that, that very same day where Lincoln's talking about guardrails on the freaking transfer portal and everything else, I mean, you've got Jimbo Fisher there throwing a temper tantrum after after and after he gets the the best recruiting class in the history of college football. The history. Four no, five star back D line. Up for a second. Go ahead. I want to back up for Let's a second. Go. Can you tell our viewers, just real quick, tell our viewers how many minutes we're into this podcast will you just tell them do you have a recorder over 13 there 13 minutes ladies and gentlemen we've been podcasting on our first episode for 13 minutes we were supposed to talk about Saban we were supposed to talk about Deion Sanders we were supposed to talk about uh um Texas A&M um what the heck is his oh, name Fisher um, Fisher Jimbo Fisher I love Jimbo Fisher and we're talking about Oklahoma people 13 <laughs> minutes and we're already talking about how oh i lost my coach hey, oh for the record i, lost the record, him. I miss him, him so stop bad it. i don't miss him i don't miss him in fact i think venable, him. i think venable you had a man crush on him on the golf course you had a man crush on him on the golf course. We're playing golf, and it's, oh, he's the Stop best, that, blah, blah, blah. Why are you lying, bro? Why are you lying? <laughs> I'm kind of lying. It's all good. <laughs> hey, but let me let me move on, because I'll play. I'll play that game. Let me just jump in there, and I, I'm going to back off that. I, I want to actually – I had something to comment about the Oklahoma the, – the change. Yeah. Um, and that is, dude, what blew my mind with the whole situation is they're like, oh, the Cowboys need a new coach. I'm like, well, if the Cowboys go get him, he's going. Um, you know, He didn't want that job. Why would you? Why he went you to USC. Hey, man, here's the deal about SC. Now they're not getting anybody as far as like fans but, until they start winning. But but like, I got a point about this. Go ahead. Oklahoma, like so. Hey, whenever I first started my new job, they told me that people don't 
quit jobs. They quit bosses. What is the leadership at Oklahoma that this guy's like, dude, I'm just, I'm going to go Apple. I'm going to go to another school. That's just the same. Okay. So you're going to get me in trouble with all the OU fans here, but I'm going to tell you because they all love this guy and it all goes back to Stoops. It all goes back to Stoops. <clears throat> they knew they were about to lose Lincoln. Whenever Stoops retired, which he should have retired 10 years before that, by the way. Whenever Stoops retired, though, it was because Lincoln was about to get a job. Okay? It was after that first year with Baker, maybe the second year. But, it, yeah, it was the second year. So, it was – but, anyway, Baker was looking great. He would come from – you know, he, he actually recruited him away from Tech. Because Cliff Kingsbury, with the brain of all brains, decided, oh, you know, wait. we're not going to give Don't him Don't say the B word. Don't not, say the Baker word. <laughs> listen, just listen to what I'm Don't saying. Don't go there. We're talking Oklahoma, okay? We're talking okay, Oklahoma. I'm trying. I'm all trying. Right, but right, you said right, the B right. word. Right, well, listen, if you want to argue about Baker, we can't. But what I'm telling you we is, won't. We won't. is that what we happened was – got to get back was, to the stadium, but let's go. What, was happen- what happened there was they knew that they were about to lose him, and they didn't want to. And so they talked, they talked Stoops into stepping down, but the way that they did it, and there was, I mean, you needed to do that, but the way that Castiglione went about it, this is the athletic director, Joe Castiglione, he had him stepping down and then he had, but I, the way it looks to me is little brother Stoops, Mike, the defensive coordinator got to stay on. Okay, if you go fast forward in a year from that and they're in the Rose Bowl, which I was sitting in that stadium, okay, and they can't Little play defense brag. a lick. They can't play defense a lick. They're winning. They should win by 40. Lincoln definitely took his foot off of the gas there. He shouldn't have. But, you know, Baker had been sick that week. I don't know. There's a. It was a bad, bad look. But overall, what was it? Nick Chubb could not be – not Nick Chubb, but um, Sony Michelle could not be stopped. Mm. They weren't stopping anybody. The next year, Ooh, when that, Kyler Murray was the quarterback and broke Baker's record, that was records, such a great game. Man. Oh, it was a good game. Bro. I remember that was a great game. But they were looking like they were about to blow Georgia out, and they let Baker their foot off playing. the gas for a second. And and as soon as they did, and Georgia got its 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 footing under it, then now we got a ball game. Now they still should have won. They still should have won. But the point of it was is you couldn't. They they were so bad at defense. Even the next year, finally they got rid of the one other stoops. But it the point is is that he left his brother there. That was part of the of the plan of him leaving. At least from what I hear from the people I know, and yeah, it continued. So all that time they were they continued to allow stoops to have some kind of. He had some kind of hold over the, you know, he still had power within the program. Lincoln did not feel like he was the boss and it should be his program. When you continue to have, and then there was, you know, and this is, this is like this at every college. I don't care what you're talking about. You're going to have different competing factions amongst alumni. You know, you just do. Uh, It happens at Texas. It happens at Alabama. It happens everywhere. Now what Castiglione did because he was such good friends with Stoops he got himself on the wrong side of it. And so from what I can tell that he was still getting all this heat about everything that was going on with, and Stoops is still, you know, he's on TV talk and he's at doing, doing Oklahoma games. And, you know, he just had too much more power over the program and it bugged him, I think. Well, and then when you, when they, when SC or, or LSU comes along, with that job, you have to look at it, I think. But I don't think he leaves if it's not for that fact. Now, and again, yeah. he was definitely dirty the way he left. I can't blame him for wanting to leave. I can't blame him for the way he but, left. I can blame but him man, for the way he but, left. But time out. I guess, I guess respect out of the fans because they couldn't see what happened. But it, like he, he just seemed like he was pissed to me. You know what I'm saying? It seems like there was. I mean, if you move on to USC, you're pissed. But anyways, you you keep mentioning Dabo Sweeney whenever you're talking about the uh, situation with uh, NIL, Saban. Yeah, and the NIL. What what did he say? Well, I, all season he was whining and complaining. You know, and mm. they they what they lose four games or something like that. It was the first time in forever that Clemson wasn't at the top of the standings and in the playoff picture themselves. And that was pretty early on that they got out of it. But I think that 
he was the first one out of any of these guys to start blaming it on the NIL and, and on the yeah. money that you could get elsewhere and all this other stuff. Well, the truth of it was, was that, you know what, you just, your quarterback wasn't as good as your last quarterback, you know, and they're probably going to be fun. fine. They're probably going to be fine. Yeah. Because Dabo knows what he's doing. Although now that Venables is gone and their other defensive uh, coach is gone too, he left also. Now what's going to happen? You know, as far as that, because to me, the thing that made Clemson dangerous, yeah, they were great on offense, but they were dangerous because their defense just didn't, you couldn't score on. Yeah. So my my only thing is I start thinking about this and thoughts start going through my head. Oh, that was like, such a blowhard, bro. He just gets on my damn nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I like Dabo. I do, man. I like Dabo Sweeney. Um, but my only thing is I start thinking about this and I'm like, the tables are turning in college football. I feel like they are. Maybe it isn't as much as I think. Yeah. But, yeah, you got these boosters, and these boosters are getting Texas A&M. Texas A&M usually always has a pretty good recruiting class. It's not, since Jimbo Fisher's not been like there, this, they've always had – I know, like I know. But they've always had a they, – they still get – Jimbo Fisher gets good people. Nick Saban gets good people. Dabo Sweeney gets good people. So, yeah, then you get this booster. You get this money added. And I start thinking about things. I'm like, man – is like University of Miami, are they going to have like Ray Lewis and Ed Reed throwing money in there to help boost? Well, you know they don't have I'm the saying? kind like, of money like, that these other the places team? do, though, though. I, I know, but what, what's the team that, like, I, I guess Elon I'll Musk is in, in trouble. News. What's the Elon Musk money? Where, where Who's his Texas. favorite team? Texas. It's Texas. That's what I'm saying. Like, so what's happening? Who's going to start throwing this Here's money around? If, if, if Texas, if Texas, is there no cap? Would, was smart, there is no cap. So, so that's crazy. And Texas, actually, you know, they're saying that Alabama was number two. But some of the some of the um, recruiting services have Texas at number two, okay, um, and they and Texas has been a top five recruiting destination forever, and they can't get their situation at coach settled, you know, and like Notre Dame, I feel like it's the same way, man. Notre Dame. The problem like, with Notre Dame is, well, Notre them. Dame can't get the the right. They're going to get good recruits, but they're not they ever going to get the same kind of recruits that these other guys do. They can't. You're right. They can't yeah, because no, you right. can't get into school. There's other things that play there. You know, when it comes to Notre you're Dame, right. there's certain players that will never get into school there. You know, you're right. And, and you're so right. that being that's why for as good as is Stanford as, that way too. Stanford is yeah, but except for Stanford, Stanford will. It's like with Duke, Duke, Stanford, those guys. Duke, you can't just get into Duke unless you're crazy, a basketball man, player. They're basketball players. They ha- they have. Um, the less, see, I was about to they have that. less stand. Their their standards drop a little bit for basketball. Okay, um, for, that's for what sports. I was going to say. But but doesn't but that make that's Mike Krzyzewski like no, that's not Notre Dame? They do not do that. Okay, okay. So that's where is if you can't get in, you can't get in. Okay, gotcha. Um, and they're not gonna. They're not gonna now. Stanford and Duke and those some of them other squads. They will. They will. Some of those other schools. Notre Dame doesn't. So. When it comes to getting in at Notre Dame, that's going to be tough. And it, look, man, for Brian Kelly, for him being in the playoff a couple of times with Notre Dame, imagine what he's, he's going to look like now. You know, that guy could coach, yeah, bro. Now that he's at LSU. No, there's no doubt. Woo! And, like, and that's the part, like, man, when you look at the NFL, like I think there's two major factors that win you football games. Obviously, number one, I think, is quarterback over everything. Right. Number two is coach. You know what I'm saying? You know, awesome. whether that's defense, offense, but quarterback, coach. College football used to be whoever cheated the best. And now. It- With Riverside FM, it's all about simplicity. Sim- simple videos, whether it's from your phone or from your, la- from your computer laptop. Um, or it could be on your desktop. Anyway, you're going to get full-on videos from each person on the podcast plus audio tracks that are separated out as well there's not really an easier way to find to do this plus they're even going to give you a free version of it to try it out before you do it there's really no downside to this give it a shot check it out hey everybody welcome back to way past dude i'm your host jason watkins and uh we kind of have a well it's kind of a special treat for me tonight you know but it's legal to cheat, or it's not cheating anymore. But now, well, but they're um, still now have... they're trying to put mo- more restrictions into place, which that and this is what pisses me off about this whole thing. We wanted to do this thing about this. This is where we're at. 
you have Saban is Saban and Fisher, and now they're throwing barbs at each other, which is funny. I love it. Um, With who? Say that again. Saban and Fisher are like fighting each other. They're all pissed off. Oh, yeah, all right? each other. That's yeah, at I'm each saying. other. But it, as far as what what bothers me about this, I don't want to hear Nick Saban's mouth crying about the freaking me neither. recruiting. I don't me neither. you should shut up, dude. Shut up. Don't tell You're it, running your legacy. He, bro, when he sat there and said last week that he wanted to see it he wanted to see college football go back to having some parody. When the hell has it had parody? Oh, shut <laughs> up, man. <laughs> nah, and that's my thing. And he's going to stoop so low yeah, dude. to call out oh, Deion Sanders' team. Like, what division is HBC, Jackson They are a swag school HBCU. And that's what I'm saying. You're going to stoop <sighs> that low. Oh, I've been a national champion all these years, all this time. Um, let's pick on Jackson State because I didn't get that guy. Yep. You know, or they we didn't get that guy you in know Division what? A year ago, up, when man. the NIL first came into play last year, he was in Texas at one of the booster meetings that he had with a bunch of folks, coaches and stuff like that in Texas, and talking about how Bryce Young, uh, Bryce, yeah, had gotten a million dollars before he ever took a snap at Alabama. Guy has a great name. Yeah, great name. Shut up. Yeah. Anyway, bro. Again. So last year he was happy to say, "Hey, yeah, we're still there. We're going to use the NIL money to work too." But when he sees that you know he doesn't get the number one class, and that A and M can can pony up some cash too, it, he gets pissy about it, and then he doesn't get yeah. the kid. He doesn't get the kid that Dion gets, and he gets mad about that too. Come on, man. I mean, he that one he shouldn't even have been upset about. He should have been glad that he didn't have to deal with him at LSU or something. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was kind of going to say too. Like, and I know he he pointed out, but but what I don't like is it sounds like, and I know he's not. I don't think he's a billionaire. I I, I know he's not a billionaire. He makes he's not making over that 10 kind of million money. a season. So maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe with endorsements, I, I have no idea. However, what it feels like is a rich guy who's throwing a fit. Because he's paid for, he gets everything he wants, or like a spoiled kid who gets everything he wants, and then there's that one thing that his mom can't buy him, like friendships, or or can't buy. You know what I'm saying? There's that one thing that he thinks is going to make him happy, like that always makes him happy, and all of a sudden it's taken away from him. He's like, "Well, oh, poor me, I'm a Nick Saban. That's exactly I what it smacks won all these of. championships, and now I can't." That's exactly what it smacks of, you know, is that it's yeah. just a bunch of whiny bitch shit. And like I don't want to yeah. hear it. I don't want to hear it from you. I feel and you. I don't. And also, I don't want to hear it from Jimbo either. He won at Florida State. What were they? I mean, and, you know, and Bobby Bowden had kind of lost Jim, his touch. Jimbo didn't, did Jimbo say anything though? Like I know he did after the fact, dude. You get called out. I think Jimbo. I, I have a little more grace for him, oh, and and maybe gosh. because I'm a Texas A&M fan. Hey, so I'm going to show my colors a little bit. I have more grace for him because he got called out and he got disrespected. And he was just kind of fighting back, like, hey, listen, this boy ain't no freaking perfect guy either. Hold on. Hold on. Tell me if I'm wrong. On signing day, his little rant was at Lane Kiffin for for being real about it. And Lane is sitting there saying, you know, we're not going to be able to compete with these schools that can pony up that kind of money. We can't. At Ole Miss, and they cannot at Ole Miss. They 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 don't have the kind of money. That Ole Miss that, that they have at A and M or Texas or who's this who's about to, who's about to be an SEC like school, scenario. you know, and then or even Alabama, they're not going to be able to pay like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I, here's here's what I love. I, Lane is the man, dude. That guy is a freaking I do. first. I used class to hate him. Troll, you know what? He, he is, is a thick, first bro. class troll. The guy can poke the bear yes. better than anybody, You're and not right. give a shit. And <clears throat> So what bothered me was they have the, the well, it's the basically that Bible that they send around or what they're calling the Bible, the college football Bible. And there's, so there was a guy that had made an entry in it and it was talking about A&M. This guy is a full on sports reporter. Now he, now he did this under the, the guise of sliced bread was his name, you know, because you want to keep your, ability to to be able to talk to people so you're not going to say this stuff on the record when even if you know about it if you're going to get you know you'll never have enough you know can't keep your job you know what i mean yeah i feel you so instead of him coming in there and enjoying the fact that he 
had just signed his fourth five-star defensive lineman for the for the class and overwhelming number one class he starts screaming and yelling and saying stupid stuff like what did he say you know you guys want to say it's about money but you know we've got one of the this is a one of the finest institutions in the country they came here for agriculture. <laughs> shut up, dude. Shut up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know nah, when you start nah, saying stuff funny. like that, bro, that's then I, I, I can't yeah, help nah, you. Anymore. I can't help okay, you. Okay, okay, I feel you. He he and had it wasn't, the easy and he was he was attacking Lane Kiffin, not so much Saban then. No, nah, I got you. Not so much not so much Saban. Now he did a little bit, and that was kind of you could see the writing on the wall that him and Saban were not on the same page right now, which I love that. <laughs> That part I That's so good. Yeah, they, I because they, I mean, he used to work with Saban, <laughs> but now they hate each other, and they're and they're doing the best they can. But that just goes to show you how quick Nick Saban will turn on you, too. Look at Lane was yeah. on the sidelines with them. He booted well, dude, him before that, the damn bowl that, game. That's what Dion said. He's like, "Oh, well, we're we're friends." Like, we thought, I don't know why he's calling me thought. out. That's what you thought. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, I Nobody's love Prime. safe, bro. I love Prime. Nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. Nobody's safe, Nobody. bro. And nah, it, dude, I, that's what this is going to be good, man. Hey, I don't know. You know, we're, we're just kind of winging this. It's our first episode. Um, how long are we making these things? Do we even care? Are we just uh, talking until we get tired? Or are we're we done with it. At least until we're done with the subject. <laughs> so we're done with the subject and then we'll okay, move cool, on. Cool. But, you okay, know, to cool. me, I feel like Nick Saban is the last person. What I was going to get at is that that's the last person I want to hear talking about. No, about I know. anybody else be doing things a certain way or being able to pay for players when, I mean, now, Frankly, now I, I think that the, I think that the, either. I don't want to hear Dabo Sweeney either. The guy, I mean, they have money Georgia. at that school, and he don't want to hear from Georgia. No, man, and you well, and Kirby didn't say anything. I don't, I haven't seen him say anything. Well, good. So. I hope he didn't. But all I'm saying is, is like there's certain teams. Well, and I don't want to see Lincoln this. Riley saying anything either. When you got 13 guys in the transfer portal that were starters a year ago, very true. And and you, you hate bring, you, coming you to hate that guy. Y'all broke up. Yeah, I hate you. You I you hate loved him. him. You you were trying to put a ring on it, and you <laughs> broke up with him. And now listen to you. I don't want to hear him talk. I, I don't want to hear that guy. It's not even like that. It's not even like it that. It is, bro. We all can hear it. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm we gonna say this. I like will that. say this. I it. I don't mind that he's gone now. I'm glad that we got Brent Venables. I think that he's gonna be a great coach. Now, what I will say. Who's that coach? Say it again. Brent, Who's the coach? Did you get Brent Venables? Okay, cool. The only reason it just kind of lagged on my end right there, I didn't know what you said. Okay, yeah, I just and that's to make sure I'm it. in a hotel room today, guys. So hopefully, this continues to. Uh, hopefully, it will all go out. Now, our, you may not even see any of it, but um, that being said, a lot of this, you know, I think that Oklahoma did rebound pretty well with that because Venables, he's a good coach. He's not. He hadn't been a head coach, so we're still. Where's he from? He was the Clemson defensive coordinator. He was actually a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Uh, he left Oklahoma because of Stoops. We were talking about Stoops earlier. Okay. When he brought Mike Stoops back, he wanted him to be co-DC with Venables, and Venables was like, you know, Peace. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. So he goes and wins yeah. another national, two more national championships at Clemson. Uh, a lot of people feel like he was the big reason for it. Now we're going to find out. We're going to find out what he's about, what kind of head coaching chops he has. Um, but yeah. bringing in a guy like Jeff Lebby, to continue the offensive, I mean, he's got he, his offenses that he's been running. He was from the Bryles school, you know. Um, he was with Coach Bryles and Kendall Bryles for a long time. Those guys know offense. Um, yeah. And uh, he's actually from Andrews, Texas. So uh, a friend of mine that that was from, um, he's from Big Spring. Good friend. He played quarterback as well in, in college, and and uh, he knows he knows Jeff pretty well. They. It's good that he's back in, and he's actually the the co the quarterback that they got to come in, in place of Caleb Williams and of course Spencer Rattler left too, um, but they're looking at they've got it's Dylan Gabriel. He's worked with Levy. He looked really good in the spring game. The offense looks like it's not really going to skip a beat. Where they've yeah. needed defensive help, Venable seems like the right fit there. We're going to find out, you know. He, and he did have a top ten recruiting class even coming in that late, so. You know, yeah. Oklahoma's going to always rebound, though. That's what Oklahoma does. They, oh, okay. uh, unlike man. unlike Texas, unlike Texas, who fires oh, their God. coach every other year, and still, and every one of them 
that you know <laughs> last year guys i'm gonna keep him on track like in the future we'll make sure that he's not oklahoma all day Hey, I'm just kidding. Hey, you know what? The only thing I would say, Jason, there's one thing that makes me sad. Like, it's sad, man, bro. What's up? You know me. I'm an avid sports fan. Um, here's how bad it is, man. I My favorite college football player of all time is Eric Crouch from, from Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? Heisman He's Trophy stud, winner. Like, I loved watching yeah, that he's, kid he's play. A, a player, man. You know, and, and like – watching Georgia Tech freaking my boy Calvin Johnson make that one-handed catch where he's coming back across the field, watching Randy Moss at Marshall Ooh. hurdle that Ooh. dude. Like I was the like, freak. you remember down the, the sidelines? Yeah. He hurdled him, and I'm like, what? And like, he, I he would have been playing at Florida college. State doing that, but he had gotten himself into some trouble. Yeah, got in trouble. Yeah. I love college football, man, I and this kind of just – makes me sad because I guess ignorance is bliss. Whenever I was a kid, I didn't realize this stuff was going on. And I thought it was about the coaches. I thought it was about, you know, the best player that wanted to play at this school. And dude, now I'm learning whoever has the most money is going to have the best players. And like, what's the point? I I mean, if anything anything was going to level the playing field, it was going to be this. Now, now, it's still going to be the haves and the haves nots. Because, look, Mm -hmm. let's just be honest. Supposedly, that would give UNM or, or, you know, somebody like that, you know, somebody that's a nobody. Think about Texas. An advantage. Like they could come up. You could see SMU coming back because they got cash. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And the truth of it is, maybe. But depends. The main thing is is that you're going to have schools that still they'll never have the money to be able to pony up like that. So while, yeah, it, like, while at the wonder, top it's gonna it's gonna you're at the top when you have your your Texases and your and your Alabamas and SC is now back in the mix because as long as SC has a decent coach there they're gonna be good you know they've always and oh, they've got money history. they're gonna have money they're gonna have boosters I mean th- oh, there's so money. many no, fans no. that's what I'm saying it's like you look at SC you, you know when SC has a decent coach back. there's money you know there's gonna be yeah. money there. And they're, look, man, they, they were winning with the, Hey, look, they took Reggie's freaking Heisman away over the crap that yeah. was going on. And exactly. They were already doing it. They've been, they were already, of course. Yeah. yeah. They took away the, Auburn. Oh, come on. That's Auburn really. was already doing it with, with Cam, Cam Newton. No he, he got yeah. in some trouble. <laughs> no, but, but what, I, what worries me is like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. So the UNM could get a boost. You're going to have some tw- top 25 schools that maybe fall <laughs> out. But like, I'm worried about like UCF, Cincinnati. What happens to those guys? You know, may, hopefully they got money, but I, I mean, I, yeah, I just don't know I what's mean, gonna. What happens to Ohio State? Like a school in the mid? Do you think they're gonna be okay? Oh, Ohio State, come on, brother. <laughs> there so? ain't no money yeah. there. Yeah, of course they're gonna be okay. Do it's, Nebraska, it's the I feel like Ohio it's a team State that's gonna come up. It's the yeah. Ohio I State feel like University. Like, they're bigger than okay. every franchise You're in right. the state. Period. But I'm just saying, like, there could be this, this drastic fall for some teams that are just like, we just don't like, I like, I just wonder, no, no. but then there could be this drastic because increase. For if, some you look at, if you look at these big time college programs, look at, I mean, even Michigan, you know, they got back, they finally got to a playoff, but Michigan, I think is going to winning all time program in the history of college yeah. football. When you look at just right. wins, but they, they have boosters. been, they have not been, of course they've got boosters and any of these squads, like, look, is Norman, Oklahoma, or is Oklahoma City? I mean, there's some money there, but there's yeah. not money. Nobody's as rich and deep pocketed as Texas at, at Austin, right? Nobody. There is not. There's guaranteed yeah. nobody. Now, if they get it right at coach, you should be afraid because they will run away with it now that they don't really have any. There's no spending limits now. Whatever, whatever they're trying to do at the NCAA level, what do you think anybody cares at this point? Because I think the the U.S. government proved that the NCAA really doesn't have any leg to stand on when it comes to – they don't have any power. You're right. So You're going to exploit these kids and make money off of them? For all these years. For all these years. Pay them. And yeah, dude, it's bull crap, Yeah, man. it's – I mean, if you listen to the guys like Jay Billis, I mean, I love the way he rants on the, on the, on the NCAA, is that it's just a bunch of hypocrites up there, you know, yeah. and, and talking – and don't give me that freaking student-athlete horseshit because that's what it is. You, these guys are athletes and they're making their money makers. They're professionals from the day they step and, on campus. 
Like used to, I didn't care. If you didn't want to pay a college basketball player when you were letting LeBron and Kobe go straight in the pros, cool. That's fine. But if you're going to make them go to – like basketball, you can go somewhere. But if you're going to make these kids go to college to play football, you better pay them. If not, and if you're, you're making, saying if you you're have making, to go through me. You know what the yeah, schools that get to the playoffs make? Or used to it was the BCS yeah. or you know any of these. And players. how many jerseys? I don't care if it has the last name on the back or not, but if I got that kid's – if I got a Michael Vick jersey, yeah, you knew call it, it, it just has to have the seven, bro. Seven. Yeah. It's just got to have the seven. That's right. That's right. And the same goes for, you know, we've been talking about Otis Taylor so much on, on my campaign on, on – you know, I'll, I want to go ahead and, and do a shameless plug Bring for it. myself there. You know, uh, no, you got to. We've got to. Uh, we've got uh, another podcast that we've been doing called Way Past Due. Uh, it's about Otis Taylor and some other guys. It's that, important. It's. I believe that it's very important. It's. Uh, we've been doing this for, and Bryce has actually chipped in a lot on this, and it's us doing it for for the fact that Otis Taylor has been. Uh, over 40 years, he's been eligible for the for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He isn't getting in. There's some ridiculous reasoning behind it. So I'd like to ask everybody to take a look at that as well. Uh, you know, we're the guys that aren't getting into the Hall of Fame. It's it's pretty it's pretty uh, unbelievable. Um, and so and for for silly reasons, you know, and and Bryce and I have a great I show where it's... where we kind of just rip apart the whole stat. The, st- the statistical data that they were trying to use as reasoning to keep him out and, and others as well. Guys like Lamar Parrish, guys like even Roger Craig isn't a freaking Hall of Famer, which is insanity to me. You know, uh, we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's it is an important thing for us. Um, but we love sports and we love talking sports. And this is why we're doing this. And, you know, when we're talking right. about this stuff, I feel like college football is going to live because the fans are not going nowhere. They are going to yeah. continue to want to see this, to see their favorite team. I mean, as much as I love the NFL, I live for Saturdays. I love it. You yeah. know, I no, want to, I, I want to watch my squad. I want to watch, and I want to watch all of them play and see who's the best team out there. Y'all don't even understand what he's talking about here. Literally, I had this dude about to walk off the golf course during Oklahoma, Texas. I had him so mad. He was on my team in a golf tournament. We're playing golf. This dude's like wanting to punch me. He's on my team. Like he wants to punch his teammate. Like what kind of person yeah. are we talking about here? What kind and of this dude is like, I'm going to leave your the team. In the middle of the freaking golf tournament. Antagonizing. Yes. Like it's a free country. I'm allowed to root for Texas. That is not what you were doing. You weren't just doing rooting no, for I Texas. No, I was being a fan. I was being a fan, Jason. Jason, uh, folks, I was being a you fan. Guys see how full of shit he is right now. Is you no, see him running guy. out of here right there? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to punch his friend. I was. I was. Hit, but hey, and he wanted to quit his who team. Tell him who won that day. Oklahoma won. I don't care. I'm not a Texas fan. I root for Texas. I don't even have a team. I have a team in every conference. I love college football. I literally love greatness and great players. But, hey, let's go back to that Otis Taylor thing, man. Like, I think it's safe to say let's just tell everybody why we think that it's a problem. And I don't say it very much. I didn't say it on your podcast. But usually, yes. I mean, I'd just like to prove stats because you can't – the stats a lot of times don't lie. In this case, they don't lie. He deserves to be in. The eyeball well, test he the, deserves the to be in. The reason he's not in But the probably, stats test, I mean – It's racism. They, well, there is some racism par- parts to it, and there's no doubt about it because what they can do, they're, they're able to, to have a certain stat that is saying, okay, well, his stats don't live up to this guy or this guy or this guy. And for a long time, they may not have. And then on top of that, you're looking at somebody like, well, and even the, the argument for Otis hasn't been the right argument, I I believe. You even had a guy like Poznanski that was arguing and agreeing with the selectors that his stats just didn't look that good in comparison. Which is stupid. But come That's on. stupid. I mean, Joe, the, yes, they did because and nobody wanted to go further into these stats. The truth of the matter is the difference was not in how good he was versus the rest of the league. The difference was – how many times they were going to throw the football at at the merger. Even at a time, even at a time that was particularly run heavy, you know, it's, I mean, at that time they, it was that three yards in a cloud of dust. We talked about that on the show. Yep. 
Yep. But even amongst teams that did that more than they threw the ball, the Chiefs were extra run heavy. On yep. average, there was 100 extra pass plays per team in the NFL, AFL during those years than yep. the Chiefs. That was how Hank Stram ran his program. Now, had he have gotten 20, 30 more footballs a year, he's in the hall already. We don't even have to talk about this. But because there's yep. so many years have passed between, and there's so many guys that, I mean, you know, we talked about guys like uh, Fred Bolitnikoff. He was only, yeah, what? Yeah, you know what? Let's just he's do like this. 1,600 yards ahead of Otis Taylor and 16 touchdowns, but at 130 games. And in fact, at 136 games for Bolitnikoff, he had not caught Otis Taylor. It took him 153 games to catch Otis Taylor in everything. So, so let's do this real quick. Two things. One, you don't ever hear me say the racism word. One, you don't ever hear that come out of my mouth. I don't need to say it. Um, I don't think we know, have to go I'm there. I agree with what you said earlier yeah. when we were talking. Is that we don't yeah. have to. This is something that people you don't need have to, to touch it. I want people to go and watch what and look at what we've done and become a part of the movement. Because the the bottom Two. line is yep. he deserves to be in the hall, along with Absolutely. along with guys like Lamar Parrish who played in that era as well, yep. and yep. and was one of the greatest defensive backs of all time. You, yep. you know, you talk about uh, Deion Sanders. Too, this guy was Deion Sanders before Deion Sanders. Fast, quick. Maybe Dion, who wasn't prime. Two. Bro. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about the attitude. The attitude's the prime, the persona. I don't know if he had that attitude. Uh, well, but he but was number... an A-man corner. You don't want to talk about that part. That dude still talks trash. <laughs> He's okay, in his cool. 70s. Cool. Maybe he was a little 70s, prime, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but but that's the point of the racism thing is that like that was like real racism back in the day. It was just uh, really yes, really and that, bad. And man. that had to do I mean, especially with the AFL guys. You know, yep, the, NFL, AFL, did, NFL, the NFL was merger. not all white. So, you know, we know that. Yeah. But yeah, they weren't. They were definitely not recruiting or, or recruiting. I say they they weren't scouting and getting a bunch of guys out of those HBCU programs at that yep. time. The AFL was because the AFL was trying to yep. become viable, and they did because of it. And because the fact, I believe the biggest thing of it is that, yes, it has to do with racism. Yes, it has to. It, it, and it also has to do with there's an AFL bias. Yep. We talked about that. they're not as good as the NFL. That they weren't as good but, as the NFL, but yet they won four of the first eight Super Bowls. But here, here, let's go to this real quick, because a lot of people don't know who Otis Taylor is, and let's educate them real quick. Hey, if, if you want to know what we're talking about, just jump on YouTube, type in um, Otis Taylor versus Drew Pearson. That's a good example. Type in Otis Taylor versus Andre Reid. Type in way past due. Type in, yeah, type, there we go, way past due. That's the podcast. Type in, what, what's some other stuff? What well, is the, the name of the is that YouTube what it's called channel? Way past due also. So if you, and then what's the website? What's the website? The website is Otis Taylor, O T I S T A Y L O R, the number four H O F dot com. After you, yep. After you watch this stuff, man, like, subscribe. That hey, like and subscribe this to this stuff too, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like, get us going. Get us if you enjoyed it. If you've stayed this long, definitely like and subscribe. I got plenty more trash talk for Jason. I can't yeah, wait till we get to talk about Mayfield. I can't wait till we get to talk about Colin Kaepernick. I'm gonna kill this dude. No, you're not. <laughs> you're gonna. You're gonna get. I can't on wait. That. We're gonna get killed on that. Wait. Like when we we start talking quarterbacks, you're gonna, you, folks. Yes. That's that's gonna that's gonna make for. It may not be great viewing, but you'll laugh. No, it'll be great. <laughs> you'll laugh. Yeah, you'll, you'll laugh, laugh at him. You'll, you'll laugh, laugh at him. He he can't get past that that freaking. That sooner red. Oh like, my can't, lord! Can't what does that have to do with Colin Kaepernick? What are we talking about? It has plenty to. Well, he played for the Niners, which is another color. An, no, you like? Listen, we're going to call you listen, nine, fifty no, shades you know of red. Talking racism. Fifty you just shades of talking red. About racism just now, and what it amounts to with Colin Kaepernick is just that. That's all it is. I disagree. I disagree. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not playing this race card all day with Otis Taylor. It's clear. It's not, it's not race. It's, mean? it's a quarterback that's not, this is another show next or tomorrow, tomorrow, tune in to hear us talk about Colin Kaepernick because it's not racism. Okay. Folks. Uh, I think we're done here. I think we are done here today. Uh, what we'll do is um, <laughs> guys, again, take a look at, um, you know, this is the nobody's safe podcast. Bryce is certainly not safe. Come tomorrow. I'm going to rip him apart. <laughs> Um, Colin Kaepernick and Jason are dead. <laughs> so 
we're going to have a good time with all this stuff. But again, uh, and check out our other podcast, uh, Way Past Due. That's going to be Way Past Due is the name of the channel on YouTube as well. So everything about Otis, the Otis Taylor deal, you will be able to figure that out there as well. Um, but um, and, you know, we're going to continue talking about some of this other stuff, too, like this. You know, we're kind of making fun of Saban and Fisher and guys like that today. And obviously, you kind of saw where our where our allegiances lie when it comes to that stuff, which, you know, I'm wearing the shirt. Who cares? So, uh, I mean, in the end, we love to talk sports. I think that, you know, with Bryce, Bryce and myself, we enjoy this. And we do this. This is something we would do all the time anyway. We might as well. We have do it on the phone. phone. Yeah. Yeah, we do it on the phone. All the time. Yeah. I, I tell him how retarded he is all the time over the phone. He tells me I'm stupid. We battle it out. We enjoy it. And we're like, dude, you know what? Might as well. Yeah. You know, and then when we got the into the Otis Taylor thing, I think it became the natural kind of thing to go from there. And so this is something we want to do. Yeah. We want to continue to bring uh, to bring this to, to the masses. And, and if you enjoy it, like and subscribe to it, man. We're going to keep putting it out there for, I think, for if for nothing else, just because we love to do it. So, you know, I don't, I don't even know how many people will watch this or will care, but um, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep trashing you. So it's, you know, we're going to have a good time. <laughs> uh, nobody Safe podcast. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll see more as the days come along. Um, but thanks a lot again, Bryce. We're having a lot of good time with that. And uh, let's, let's continue on with it. Otis Taylor for Hall of Fame.